Hello, welcome to First Christian Church Disciples of Christ, Bardstown, Kentucky, and we are so glad you have joined us for worship online today. I'd invite you to prepare the elements for sharing and communion with us. Um, you can have whatever you'd like for uh, your, your cup, for water, juice, coffee, and as well as some type of bread to share as well. Um, this afternoon, we are, we are offering Meeting Jesus at Home at 1 p.m. If you haven't got the link, please call me right away, and I will give you that link for today. Also, and that's for our children in the church. Also, youth group is changing your time. We're going to try something different. We will be meeting at 11 a.m. this morning. So, anyone 6th through 12th grade, we invite you to join us. Again, let me know if you need that Zoom link. We're going to be talking some about Super Bowl Sunday and the month of February and how we can be a part of feeding people in our community. Monday, January 11th at 6 p.m., we have a board meeting. Um, that Zoom link will be coming from Betty. Bible study is this Wednesday, January 20th at 6 p.m., we would invite anyone to join us. Last week we talked about Apollos. This week we will be talking about John, a disciple of Jesus. Food donations. We collected 30 items last Monday for the food pantry. Our next drop-off is in another week on January 25th. A couple of upcoming dates to know, and we'll have more details later, but February 17th is Ash Wednesday, and we will be having Ash Wednesday drive through Worship team is hoping, if weather permits, to start back with Cruise In for Christ at the start of Lent, which is February 21st, and that would be weather permitting. Stay tuned for more details as those days become closer. We continue to provide meals for Room in the Inn on Thursday evenings. If you'd like to volunteer for that, to help with that in any way, talk to Kelly or Dorsey. Um, also, Michael is looking for people to help with intake, which is checking guests in, and you just do one night a week to help with that. Thank you. At this time, let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship as we listen to our prelude. Fragmented world. As part of the one body in Christ, 
We welcome all to the Lord's table as God has welcomed us. Let's please come together for a prayer of invocation and then please say the Lord's Prayer with us. Almighty and most wonderful God, we do thank you for the opportunity to be here to worship as we come together over social media, as we come together in the Spirit. We ask that you will continue to open our hearts and minds to receive what you would have to tell us. Let us listen for your whispers in the night. Let us be open to your calling and ever ready to move when you call us to do so. We thank you for this time of praise and prayer. And we remember the prayer that Jesus taught his first disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let's please come together and sing our opening hymn, Joyful, Joyful. Okay, so 
If I said, Flo, you're going to need to clean up all that stuff you have accumulated back in the choir loft, you would run and do that right now. Flo. Flo. That's being a good listener. You have to, when, when, when the adult in your life says you need to do something, you, you probably need to go do it. Don't shake your head no. Yes is the answer. Yes, okay. So, Jesus says, follow me, and some new disciples did just that. Yeah, and that's right. They listened, and they began to follow Jesus and learn more about him. Would you like to do that? Yes, you would. But you know what? It's not always easy. No, it's not always easy to follow Jesus. Sometimes you have to make some hard choices. You might have friends doing things that aren't a good thing to do. And you have to decide to make the right choice, okay? So, let's work together and follow Jesus, right? And listen for God to call us to do that. Okay, let's have our prayer today. Dear God, we thank you for Jesus. Dear God, we thank you for the children. Amen. Thanks for helping me. As we come to our time of offering today, I want to remind everyone there are several ways that you can uh, still give for the cause of Christ in our world through First Christian Church, Slides of Christ in Bardstown. You can mail your uh, check to us. You can drop it off by the church uh, during the week. Uh, you can also uh, give online. Uh, the secure website is, or a secure link uh, to that is on our church website. So there are many different ways that you can continue to give. As we're still uh, struggling with the pandemic and different uh, types of unrest in our nation, let us not forget that God's purposes still go on. And it's more important now than it has been probably in any other time in our lifetimes to continue on in the mission and the faith in God through Jesus Christ. Let's continue to give as we should and as we're able. Let us pray, please. Almighty, most wonderful God, we give you thanks for what has been given, what will be given, and we dedicate all to your service, to your glory, to the building of your kingdom here upon this earth. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Let's sing our prayer hymn, Shall We Gather at the River?
And we want to keep in our prayer Sherry F., who is having more tests to determine what kind of treatment uh, plans she will follow for cancer. We need to pray for uh, Carter and uh, Chrissy W. One is in Veterans Hospital, the other in Northern Women's Hospitals with uh, COVID-19. Let's play, pray for Laverne D, who's been in the hospital and is known as Ma to Terry T. We need to have prayers for her for guidance and strength. We need to pray for Joe K, who fell last Sunday, has been in, in and out of the hospital, and he is home now uh, under hospice care with brain cancer. We need to pray for Dennis, who had surgery this past Thursday, the brother of Judy C. We need to pray for the family and friends of Rachel G, who passed away uh, this last week. Uh, we need uh, to pray for the family and friends of Brian S. and Howard L., U.S. Capitol Police officers who died from injuries sustained during the attack on the Capitol on January the 6th. We need to pray uh, for uh, Bill S. on the death of his mother from COVID-19 who is a uh, regional minister of Virginia and Christian Church Disciples of Christ, and his son Tristan, who has been on our prayer list. Let's uh, come together in prayer as a community of faith. Almighty and most wonderful God, we do pray to you because you are a God that hears our prayers. So far above our understanding, with a love that we cannot even begin to understand. We thank you for that love that permeates each and every one of our lives. Help us to see it, dear Lord, not to turn a blind eye or, or to turn away in, in bitterness and anger because of some of the rough things that happen in life to each and every one of us. But help us, Almighty God, to stay focused upon you and what you're doing, not just in our lives, but in the lives of everyone around the world. We ask, dear Lord, you'll be with each and every one of those who've been mentioned this day. For those that are ill and ask that your hand of healing will rest upon them, especially pray for those struggling with COVID-19 and those who know loss because of the virus. We pray for those who who have lost family members this last week, dear Lord, and pray for your hand of love and healing and comfort to be upon each and every one. We do pray for our nation, Almighty God, and pray for a peaceful transition of power. We, we thank you for President Trump and his service to our nation, and ask you to be with his family as he, he and his family as he goes on to do other things, and be with Joe Biden, and his family as he assumes office in this next week. We do ask that you'll be with those standing in the front lines, Almighty God, of this pandemic, our health care workers, first responders. We pray for those who have struggled for so long in helping others, those who are burnt out. Just give your refreshing breath of the Spirit to be upon all of us. We continue to struggle with COVID-19 and its effects. And we do thank you for the vaccines that are in place. And we just pray they will continue to be passed out and taken so that this pandemic will be behind us one day and give you all the glory for it. We want to pray for our teachers and students who have started back in in-person learning and do pray for your safety and protection, dear Lord, for both students, teachers, staff, all that make our school system run. We give you thanks for each and every one, and we do ask for your safety to be there to prevent illness. We pray for those who are still struggling with different concerns and addictions at this time. The services and health is limited. We do ask Almighty God, as we approach Martin Luther King Jr. Day, that there will be justice and peace, Almighty God, that there will not be violence and hatred, 
that the sin of bigotry will not rear its ugly head. We want to pray, Almighty God, for our nation during this very difficult hour. As we are a fractured nation, divided in each side thinking that they are so right and the other side is just so wrong. We do pray for peace and justice for all people, regardless of where they come from, the color of their skin, their, their country or language of origin. We pray for peace and understanding. That those groups that would rise up in hate to cause violence will be calmed down and wiped away. Through realizing that we are all your children. For those of us who claim to be Christian, dear Lord, we ask that you will help us to live out the best of our faith in love, in peace, in justice, in tolerance, and understanding. Not just waving a Christian flag so that we can do violence and threaten hatred and murder. Guide our nation, Almighty God, through this hour as you have done through so many precarious hours before. Lead us to your peace. May we be stronger on the other side, more loving, more caring, more genteel, accepting all as our sisters and our brothers, loving all as our sisters and our brothers. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. scripture reading today comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verses 43 to 51. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, we have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming towards him, he said of him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, where did you come to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly, I tell you, you will see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Thanks be for God's word in our lives. Do we hear God calling today? God has been calling people throughout the generations and is still calling today. Another scripture in today's lectionary readings that I almost read, but it's kind of long, so it's from 1 Samuel chapter 3, verses 1 through 20, and I would encourage you to read that on your own. It's the calling of Samuel by God to be a prophet. Samuel was a young boy at the time. He was serving Eli in the temple, and one night he kept hearing his name called. Samuel, Samuel. And he would run to Eli and say, what do you want? Eli said, I didn't call you. This happened several times and he finally said to Samuel, this must be God calling. Wait, lay in your bed and listen for what God will tell you. 
In our reading today from the Gospel of John, we read of another type of calling, that of Philip and Nathaniel. Just before this, in that chapter, Andrew and another disciple of John, of John's, started following Jesus after John proclaimed him the Lamb of God. Andrew then found his brother Simon and says to him, We have found the Messiah. And he took him to meet Jesus, who then called Simon Cephas, or Peter, meaning the rock. And he said, Follow me. Philip shared that call then with Nathanael, who challenged him asking, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip simply responded, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael, he already knew him. And Nathanael proclaimed him the Son of God. So what is all this calling about? Samuel in the middle of the night, Philip and Nathanael after Andrew and Simon. We all experience God's call on our lives in different ways. Sometimes there's another person who helps us hear that call. Other times a friend tells us about it and invites us to join and hear the call. Remember the good old days when we used to take it as normal to gather together here in this sanctuary for worship. We'd gather for service and for fellowship, for mission trips, for youth groups, and we helped each other grow in our faith. We helped each other hear the voice of God calling in our lives. Well, what are we doing now to help each other hear God's call in our lives? When we continue to offer worship and Bible study, youth group, children's ministry online, it's not the same as physically being together. But I think there's something else. You see, I think it means that we have to work harder at our faith. Faith has probably, for many of us, been a very easy, comfortable thing to do. We came to church and worshiped together. Some went on to Sunday school. Some went to youth group or children's ministry or Bible study. It was pretty easy. Stay around, talk to your friends for a fellowship time. Now, now we have to work at our faith. We have to work at connecting and helping each other. And it's not that easy and comfortable, is it? When Jesus called those first disciples, he didn't say, follow me, it's going to be easy. He never said, there's no burdens, there's no difficult task, just hang out and have a good time with me. Jesus knew this would not be easy. He knew that many would fall away and others would betray or deny him. Think about it. What happened to those first people who gathered to hear the Sermon on the Mount? The thousands that he fed, all of those healing stories. What happened when he faced a mock trial and was crucified? Community, worship, it's all easy when we can physically be together. It's not as easy when we're separated by a virus. But community in our spirit, with the spirit, is important for all of us. And so we are called to find new ways to connect and to put some effort into our faith, to be a community in the spirit for each other. As I was writing this and studying the scriptures and reading some different things about it, it came to me that there is something we can do to be a stronger community, to hear God's call on our lives, and to help others hear that call as well. I'm thinking specifically of prayer partners. And I thought about it, and I think we need two groups for prayer partners. And so I'm going to encourage you to reach out 
and be part of one or both of these prayer groups. Now for the first prayer group, you're gonna have a partner. And it might be one or two others in this prayer group. And if you want to do this and to be a part of this, what I'll do is get all the names and then we'll randomly choose one or two prayer partners to be together. If you have a request of a certain person, we can do that also. And I'll give you each other's contact information and it will be up to the two or three of you to reach out and to find a way to be in prayer together. Maybe you'll do it by letters, by text, by email. You might set a time each day or once a week that you want to both pray at 5 o'clock on Monday nights. You'll both be praying. You could set a time once a week and call each other and pray together over the phone. Be creative and make a connection to strengthen your faith and the faith of another person. And to be in prayer for our church, our community, our country, and our world during this time. Now this second prayer group I mentioned, I need some special people who will be given the name of a child or youth in our church and asked to pray for them during this time. Our children and youth are struggling right now with so many changes, separation from their church family. Now, depending on how you want to participate, you might be asked to pray for, for more than one if we don't have quite enough. And I will say for safety reasons, this part of praying for our church children, I will limit to those who have been actively involved in this church family and already know our children, just for safety. But if you'd like to participate in either group or in both groups, you could be in both groups. Please contact me. You can text me. You can call me. You can email me. I prefer you email me and not the church because I don't check the church email. You can call and leave a message on the church phone. I'd like to know by next Sunday, January 24th, if you would like to be a part of one of these prayer groups. We've been isolated from loved ones, neighbors, and friends for almost a year now. And we're continuing to see infections and deaths rising daily. But there's more than that right now, isn't there? We're also facing a very divided time in our country. There is violence, threats of spoken and written that are not helpful, but are rather harmful to each other when we mock and we hurt others. We are divided by this pandemic and how we stay safe and how we keep our neighbors stay safe. We are divided by politics. Can we hear God calling us over all the noise in this world that wants to divide us? God is calling us. God is calling us over the noise. That is not our call. Your call, our call, is to love. It doesn't mean we can't state our opinions and beliefs. It doesn't mean we can't have strongly held convictions. It doesn't mean we can't speak up against injustice or hatred. But it means that we can do so with respect and love. Name calling, derogatory terms, violence, that is not our call. Giving an opinion, listening to others, even when we don't agree, can be done in love. What is our calling in life? Sometimes I fear that being apart has allowed us to let that call slip a little. Our call is to love the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and to love our neighbor as ourself. We cannot allow what is going on in the world to influence our loving hearts. 
I invite you to join me in a prayer group and to work with others to listen and hear God's call on each of our lives. Come and see. Follow Jesus. God is calling each of us. Will you pray with me? Loving and gracious God, may we take and make the time to be quiet and to listen for your voice in our lives. Help us, O oh God, to turn our hearts to you, to love you, to love our neighbors, even when it seems almost impossible. Help us to speak up for those facing injustice. Help us to love. In the name of your Son we pray. Amen. And we remember the invitation, come and see, follow Jesus. An invitation we receive each week for any who would accept Christ as Lord and Savior of their lives. We would invite you to come and see. And so we come together around the table. Two of our elders will be leading us soon in that time together. And we remember that at the Lord's table, all are welcome. All of our differences are put aside. And we remember that we are one in the body of Christ. Let us prepare by singing our hymn of communion. your communion ready. Uh, we believe that Christ meets us at the table, not just the table here, but at restaurant tables and at kitchen tables. We believe that we can call upon Christ to transform our lives, our relationships, our world, and through our spiritual communion, we may experience real change. Let us all approach this table with our own honest prayers, inviting Christ to show up once again in our lives at our table and bring about divine change among us and within us to be Christ-like and treat our fellow human being like Christ would want us to treat them. As we ask in your name, amen. For I received from the Lord what I also handed unto you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Yeah. Yeah. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This is the cup in the new covenant of my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Thank you. Just a reminder that if you want to be a prayer partner, be a part of that, of either group or both, please let me know by next Sunday the 24th. Thank you.
And now for our benediction. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of God's Son. And the blessing of God Almighty, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen.